Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another first impression. So tonight, uh, we're going to do a quick early impression on a house I've actually never smelled before. So this is a first for me, not just exploring this fragrance, but also exploring this house in general. And it's a house called Rania J. And the fragrance is called Oud Assam. So uh, I've been, I decided to start doing these nighttime videos to try to run through the ample amount of samples that I have uh, and, you know, just give, put them on paper, if you will, because I don't have enough, I don't think, to wear this as a scent of the day. Um, and, you know, I probably won't be buying a bottle for 90% of these samples, 95% of these samples even, maybe. Um, but I did want to put my thoughts on paper. So this is a house I've been very interested in sampling and getting to know because I hear a lot of good talk about this house. And uh, this fragrance in particular gets a lot of love because apparently uh, the house of Rania J uses real oud in here. That's the, that's the um, you know, rumor, the talking point, if you will. I think the brand even says they use real oud. Um, and uh, Assam, the name oud Assam, just so you guys know, Assam is an actual region in India. Uh, I think it's in the northern part of India, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so it it, com it composes an entire region, and there is Indian oud in this composition. And so when you first spray, it starts off with a barnyard oud. Now I should mention, this um, initially was released in 2012, and something I should say about the brand, you know, they are kind of this smaller niche uh, brand, if you will, but they put a lot of stuff out in 2012, 2013, and then 2014, and then they just haven't issued very much lately. I think he did issue something in 2019 called Musk Motius. Um, but before that, it was like 2016 with Queer Andalou, which I would love to try. That sounds right up my alley, Queer Andalou, uh, which is a Spanish leather. Um, so Udasam, what, what's it like? What does it smell like? So um, uh, Rania Jonah is the, is the perfumer. And um, it starts off with this barnyard oud, okay? I almost want to say generic Indian barnyard oud. That's the feeling that came to my uh, head whenever I smelled it. But you can definitely tell it's real oud, okay? It has that um, it has that barnyard animalic quality to it. And my guess is that when this came out in 2013, just the fact that there was quote-unquote real oud in this perfume... Um, was probably enough for this to, to sell. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's probably all it took because you have to remember, it was probably competing against stuff like this. You know, it was competing against oud wood, which there's no real oud in this. There's that molecule that passes for oud. It was competing against my scent of the day, if you watched my previous video. Um, Versace Porom Oud Noir. You know, no real oud in that most likely, unless, again, the disclaimer, just so I don't get sued by these brands, is that unless they say there's real oud, if they say there's real oud, there's real oud, but, you know, most of those type of brands are not going to use real oud, they're going to use that oud molecule. So claim to fame here is that it's real oud, you want to take the next step up from Creed Royal Oud or, um, you know, the Versace or Tom Ford, here you go. Uh, Rania J. Udasam. And I think that was maybe enough back in 2013. This is almost nine years old. Now, since then, Fridecom, especially Oud lovers, have changed. We have Russian Adam, who gave us the beautiful house of Ariz Lodore, which I've very luckily got to know him as a person, as a man, as a perfumer, um, and his house. And he's been kind enough to go through interviews with me, and they're on the channel. Watch them if you have not fantastic insight into his creative process, who he is, the ingredients he uses, all that good stuff. Uh, and then, of course, Bortnikov, his buddy from Feel Oud, is the other one that I've got a chance to explore over the last couple years. Uh, Real Oud used there. Um, and then there's some other indie niche perfumers, like lately, uh, the last, I've, I've, I have some, maybe three different videos now, I think, on the house of Agar Aura, which is... Um, Russian Adam's friend. His name is Taha. Taha actually kind of gave him like a boost to get going. You know, he gave him great advice when he was first starting out. Um, and and so he has a brand. He has kind of a different take on Oud, but um, it is real and they go to extreme lengths to make sure that 
you know, they're using the highest quality real oud. So whereas a year or two ago, I would probably say I'm nowhere near an expert. Uh, maybe I'm completely ignorant of the oud game. Now that I've kind of got my nose on some of these real oud fragrance, this TSVGA Parfums that's in between the Rojas, Fiona, which was my scent of the day a couple days ago, that uses real oud. Um, and so I have a lot of experience all of a sudden. It just kind of fell into my lap. So even though I wouldn't call myself an expert by any stretch, um, I do at least now I'm getting more and more my legs underneath me and beginning to understand what the real proper high-end oud profile should feel like, okay? So when I say that this feels like a generic barnyard oud, I'm comparing it to kind of where Fragcom has gone, or not just Fragcom, but the fragrance industry has gone from the time this was released until now. A lot's happened between 2013 and 2022 in the oud world. Ensar completely blew up. You know, his prices are insane, but um, the quality of some of the stuff that I sniffed from him uh, Tiger Lust, for example, was the one that I was very kindly sent a sample by my perfume god uh, person, uh, which one of my subscribers joked and said that's going to be the name of their band, which I think that would be an amazing band, Perfume God Person, or People, uh, Perfume God People. Um, so, yes, I mean, I was very lucky to get to smell that, and, um, you know, Russian Adams compositions and him being so kind to send me the individual ingredients has helped my nose like no one, you know, like nobody's business. A actually being able to smell sweet Indian oud, Cambodian oud, plantation oud, wild oud, Chinese oud, all this stuff has really helped. And so when I say this is like a generic Indian oud, I'm not trying to put it down because it does smell real. It does smell like they're using... Um, it does smell like they're using real oud. Absolutely. The question of real or not real is not on the table with this. This is real oud opening. It's barnyard. It's fecal. It has a bit of that rotting feel, you know, like that molding, rotting fertilizer feel to it, which I enjoy, you know. Um, it's strange to say that I enjoy it, but I do. Um, but now I'm taking the next step, you know. So now I'm thinking further ahead. I'm, th I'm taking the next step from just real oud to what quality oud is it, right? Because now apparently it's not just the oud being real or fake, it's what quality oud are you getting? Because Russian Adam explained to me that even sometimes from the same tree, you could have very cheap oud that sells for $100 and you could have sinking agar wood which sells for $1,500 for a gram, you know? It just depends on which part of the tree it's pulled from and how it's processed and stuff like that. How it's distilled is also very important. So all these different factors. So this doesn't smell like some of the super high end, um, you know, ouds that I had a chance to smell from, from Russian Adam. It just doesn't go into that category. Uh, however, for what it does for a niche house, uh, a niche house that is using real oud in the composition. The opening will give you that barnyard feel for a little while, but it only lasts a little while. It's been on my skin for an hour and a half now, okay? So I've had it on for these short videos. Um, I'm not gonna wear these all day. It's really kind of like a first impression. This is the first time I've ever smelled this, by the way. And um, for the first half an hour, the barnyard oud is there and it's center stage, okay? The oud is the star of the show. But slowly as the uh, minutes tick by, once you hit that 30 minute mark, the barnyard oud almost like takes a bow and starts to back away and goes behind the curtain, if you will. And there's other players that come to the forefront. So you get this cedar wood, um, you get vetiver, uh, you get frankincense, black pepper, tonka, and musk. And the ones that are the strongest that really start to come to the forefront initially are cedar and, frank and frankincense, those two. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that for the first 30 minutes, the star of the show is the oud. For the next 30 minutes, the star of the show is the frankincense. And then after that, it's been on my arm for a little over an hour and a half now. The star of the show has been this cedar wood which I use that term lightly because it almost smells a little bit synthetic. So there's definitely some synthetics in the base that are used here. Obviously, there's synthetics in the perfume. 
Uh, this is not an all natural brand and all natural perfume is usually not good anyway. It's very hard to do all natural perfume. Well, very, very hard. Um, and so this has this synthetic vibe to it now that we're an hour and a half in. And really over the last half an hour, I've been noticing it more and more and more, almost like this ambery. I don't want to use the word amber woods because it's, it could be amber woods. It could be that amber extreme or whatever they call it. Um, I've never smelled amber extreme to isolate that molecule, but I do get this generic ambery, um, isoe super ambroxin, whatever you want to call it in the base thing going on, which is kind of a shame because it starts off very natural with that oud, but then it slowly starts to kind of descend into something that I like. I would wear it. I don't know if I would buy a bottle at this point in my journey because of everything else that I have. If I have never smelled, uh, before I go into that, actually, let me let me do this because there is something to my nose, an undertone to the oud for the first 30 minutes that you get that reminded me of something a little bit chocolatey, okay? So you get this chocolatey oud, which again, Russian Adam did uh, Russian oud, and that's one of the most uh, amazing uh, chocolatey fragrances I've ever smelled. Bortnikov did... Um, Oud Monarch, which is an amazing Oud chocolate, chocolatey Oud vibe. Um, so there's fragrances now that are out that have just been done so well. I mean, they've almost been, they've perfected that category that um, I started to think, oh no, there's no way this is going to compete with that. But then it puts the brakes on that chocolatiness, you know. There is a little bit of that undertone to it. I don't know where it's coming from either. Maybe the mixture of the tonka and the oud. I have no clue. But, uh, or maybe it's just the type of oud. Because some ouds have that baked into it. Like, for example, um, one of the ouds that I smelled in, uh, uh, that was used in one of his compositions, um, had, had choco barai is what it called it. It had this, um, chocolatey feel even to the oud itself and um, you know sometimes it just depends on how it's distilled and remember we're talking 2013 there's been huge advancements in the distilling of oud in the last decade so who knows what quality of oud they were using in 2013 like I said probably just saying it was real oud was enough I mean it was it was probably enough to sell a bunch of bottles for, for this brand and um, so it starts to hint in that direction where it's going to go chocolatey and oody and then all of a sudden it kind of puts the brakes on and it starts going more to that frankincense. And it starts to hint more towards that peppery, spicy, woody area. Um, there is a bit, like I said, that oily, lemony frankincense, very dry. So once you pass the half hour mark and the oud starts to fade a little bit, you notice that the fragrance all of a sudden turns bone dry because the oud adds that, uh, like I said, rotting, moldy, manure, fertilizer vibe, right, that you get from barnyard Indian oud, traditional just barnyard Indian oud, basic. But it doesn't feel super dry, you know, because it can almost feel moist, like rotting wood can feel moist sometimes, right? And, um, but once the frankincense start to, starts to take over, the fragrance, it's almost like all of the moisture just gets sucked out. It just turns bone dry. That frankincense starts to take over and mixes with that cedar, that generic cedar note that I think is what's bothering me. I think it's that cedar note that is just not done very well to my nose. Um, and again, I like it. I'm not bashing it at all because it doesn't deserve to be bashed. It's a good fragrance. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance, especially I'm trying to think about the time that it was released too, because in 2013, this was maybe even somewhat revolutionary. Um, I don't know. I, there was no Ariza Dory back then, for example. There was no Bortnikov, for example. So this, in 2013, this, this is pretty revolutionary. Um, and... Like I said, it feels like the frankincense starts to take over and the oud begins to kind of go to the backstage. You also get a little bit, now that it's an hour and a half in, I'm also starting to get this pillowy musk, okay? This white pillowy musk starts to kind of take over. So it sits on this bed of pillowy musk, but the cedar and the musk are kind of competing for to be the star of the show right now. They're both singing. 
on stage. Uh, and, um, um, you know, once, once the fragrance begins to dry, like I said, an hour, an hour and a half in, there was one other feeling that I got all of a sudden. And, um, it kind of hit me and now it's gone. And then it hit me again and then it's gone again. And I've noticed it for the last half an hour or so is it almost feels like there's a tobacco vibe to this fragrance. Um, again, I don't know if that's just the mixture of the Tonka because my brain is associating Tonka with tobacco because many times Tonka is used to sweeten that tobacco note. There's no tobacco, right? Um, but it does feel like there's a little bit of a tobacco note. And for the last half an hour or so, it feels like you almost took a dry cigar, unwrapped it, and wet the end, okay? So you put it in your mouth, you wet the end of the cigar, and that's the texture and the vibe that the tobacco feeling was giving my nose for the last half an hour. And again, it's kind of playing peekaboo right now. So sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. Um, the other interesting thing to note about this fragrance, and it's just a thought, is that this is 2013, okay? So 2013, uh, most ouds are mixed with what? Rose. They're rose ouds. They're just generic rose oud combo. That's what everyone did. It was just rose and oud, rose and oud. Um, and they didn't do that. I have to give them kind of props for that. There's no rose in this. It's not a rose oud. It's a rose frankincense, and cedarwood fragrance predominantly, or cedarwood, as I was saying. See, t now that it's dried longer and longer, an hour and whatever, 40 minutes, 45 minutes on my skin, I'm getting this synthetic vibe, this base, this synthetic base that's kind of bothering me a little bit, and it's gone completely away from that oud opening. The oud is completely gone almost. Um, like, it just dissipated. It was there for the blast, and now it's kind of transitioning, which I don't like. Um, and maybe it's because I've been spoiled with the Bortnikovs, the Arizadores, you know, all that stuff. But, um, it, I like the fragrance. If I had it, I would wear it. Would I actually buy a bottle? I have no clue how much these go for, by the way. Let me see if I can find it on Lucky Scent just real fast. Um, there are others from this brand, by the way, that I am very interested in trying. Ombre Loop, I think, is one, for example. Queer Andalou is the one I really want to try. And T Habanero is the other one I heard good things about. Um, so Udasam sells for 50 mils for $155. So it's not bad for a fragrance that uses real oud. Uh, it says, Oud Virgins, look away now. Rania J's majestic Udasam features an authentic Indian oud oil that doesn't pull any punches. Kind of true for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then it really starts to kind of die down, like I said. The juicy, bitter orange framing the opening notes only serves to highlight the creamy blue cheese feel of the Uhud. Whatever, fertilizer, blue cheese. But give it a moment to settle and you'll begin to understand why Indian Oud is considered the most spiritually uplifting type of Oud. As the nose adjusts and the Oud notes begin to soften, one begins to discern the complex aromas of deep golden spice, leather, and fermented creamy woodiness. A smell as ancient as time itself. I don't get very much leather from this. Um, maybe they mean from the oudiness can feel a little bit leathery. Some ouds can give off that feel, like I was saying, depending on how it's fer um, depending on how it's distilled. I almost said fermented. Uh, better yet, this is one Western oud that doesn't drift into aimless sweetness in the base. Ah, uh, I was just saying the base feels kind of generic. Yes, there's no like ultra sweet. I mean, if you're comparing it to 1 million or something, no, this is not 1 million. But it does feel like there's some synthetics in the base. Um, instead, a nutty vetiver, peppery musk, and smoky incense contribu contributes a fresh woodsy character that makes one think of a great forest in, northern, in a northern climate. A genuine oud experience in this price bracket is a rarity. We recommend you take the leap. Yeah, there's probably some truth to that. For $155, you're probably right, but I would say spend an extra $100 or $150 and get yourself a Arizadore, Bortnikoff, or whatever it is. Buy Fiona from the brand of Suga TSBGA. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. It's, um... Uh, does it beat the designers as far as Oud goes? Yes. I mean, as far as, like, a real Oud experience goes, yes. I mean, if you're comparing it to Creed Royal Oud or Tom yeah. Ford Oud Wood, like I said, is it is it better than this as far as real Oud? Yes. Um, but I can't say I'm blown away enough to buy a bottle. However, I can say this. Uh, Rania J's Oud Assam has at least intrigued me enough that I would love to try the rest of the brand. Um, I'm at the point in my fragrance journey, if you will, um, that I won't blind buy stuff like this. So I won't go blind buy Queer Andalou as much as I would love to. Uh, I, I have to try stuff now, especially since I have so much perfume to wear. Adding something to the collection has to be, I either got a great deal, like for example, I just found a bottle of 50 ml Koros with the silver shoulders for $45. You know, I couldn't pass that up full. Uh, and I got a bottle of, um, of, uh, Thierry Mugler Amen um, Pure Leather for 100 bucks, full, 99% full. Like, I couldn't pass that up, right? Uh, and I got a backup of Ombre Sultan Vintage, 80% full, in the old style bottle, which are very hard to come by, under 100 bucks. I mean, even though those weren't on my radar, I know the scents, I know the fragrances, um, and, you know, at those prices, I couldn't say no. You know, unless something like that pops up, I'll probably just you know, stick to what I have, or wait to try to get samples from the brand, but I won't, um, I won't blind buy. But the fragrance has intrigued me enough that I would at least like to sample the brand. I'd like to, I'd like to check the brand out. I'm interested in the brand. Let's say that it's piqued my interest. Okay. Um, so thank you for watching everybody. 21 minutes, 22 minutes on a short video. Well, it is short for me, I guess, but, um, I, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you are familiar with the House of Rania J, um, if you know this fragrance, Udasam, I'd love to know if you agree or disagree with me. And uh, I love seeing your faces in the comments. Like I always say, likes, subscriptions always help the channel. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to twist your arm. Uh, but it does help, I think, with the exposure. And, um, you know, it helps finding new people that are like us, that are out there, lost little, lost little lambs, you know, that need to be brought home uh, to the Ram community. You know, the people who are out there, the real perfume lovers, those are the ones that I want. I want them to at least be able to know about me. Uh, and we're starting to see more and more of that. So uh, I appreciate everyone's uh, support and um, the generosity with the samples, honestly, is very humbling. And um, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow with another video. Cheers, guys.